such as the ATACMS, which I think you're referring to, which mm. is the Army Tactical uh, Missile. <clears throat> now, I, I mean, some of us believe that the U Ukrainians may already have a few of these, though nobody would admit it. And the Americans won't either confirm or deny that they've given them to Ukraine, but they've certainly given ATACMS missiles to uh, Romania uh, and Poland. And it's entirely plausible, it seems to me, that some of those missiles delivered to other allies have found their way to Ukraine. Um, and I suspect more of them will. Part of the appeal, in inverted commas, of using drones is that they, they can attack so frequently and, and so readily. Yes, the point is that they're cheap uh, and they're fairly basic technologies. So the, the Shahid 136, which is the Iranian drone that the uh, Russians seem to have of supplies of about 2,500 of, that's the figure that's being touted as the number they've got from Iran. <clears throat> they cost about $20,000 each to make. They are fairly basic. They've just got a petrol engine. They travel about 100 miles an hour. They carry a small charge. They use commercial GPS, so they're not uh, especially sophisticated navigationally. But if you can launch 30 or 40 of them, and three or four get through, or 10 get through, then you can make some impact. Mm. And that's what's happening. The Ukrainians say that they're shooting down over 80% of these drones, and that's probably true, maybe an exaggeration, but they're clearly shooting down or intercepting most of them. But at the numbers you can use them at, then some will get through and they'll certainly do some damage. The US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, has called Russia's aggressive use of drones appalling. Um, I suppose that speaks to the kind of the condemnation, of course, <clears throat> for what is going on from around the world. In reality, though, what is the level of um, ag aggression that the, the use of these drones demonstrates? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's not the, the fact that they're drones which makes it appalling. It's mm. the targets. Uh, it doesn't matter what you use, whether it's conventional bombs or missiles or, or uh, uh, you know, a uh, sort of very sophisticated precision guidance device or a drone. It's the question of what is the target. And the targets clearly are civilian centres and critical national infrastructure. The, the Russians are trying to put out all of the critical national infrastructure to destroy Ukraine's power supply for the winter and to, to uh, deprive it of electricity, heating, water, and so on. And that is, if it's done deliberately, then that is a war crime, straight up, no question. So it's as much of a war crime to attack civilians' facilities, only as civilian facilities, as it is to attack civilians directly. Mm. Uh, let's turn to some of what we heard from Vladimir Putin then. Um, he claimed Liz Truss, first of all, had made a folly and was a bit out of it, saying someone should have corrected her. This is over um, her warnings around nuclear, the potential for nuclear uh, incidents and war. Uh, Washington could have said they have nothing to do with that. What do you make of his, his kind of quite personal attack on Liz Truss? Yeah, well, she's she's very easy to attack because she says things without thinking. She's a great example of a senior politician who operates mouth without engaging brain. And she um, she answered a question, as I understand it, and they said, you know, would you press the nuclear button if necessary? And she said, yes, I would. Well, a, a more statesman person answer, a more mature answer would be we look at every situation on the on its on its merits. And I understand the power and don't 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 think that I wouldn't do it. But, you know, she wanted to give one of her snappy answers, which was uh, ill considered. And so it's not surprising that when she says things like that, it'll get pick up, picked up by foreign leaders in exactly the same way that when she was foreign secretary, she gave the advice in the first days of the war that she supported anybody going to the front to fight for Russia, which were to fight for Ukraine against Russia which was directly contrary to the advice her own department was putting out. Again, she just doesn't think about what she's saying. Mm, I suppose, crucially, is, I mean, so far, the, the, the most dramatic outcome of her comments has been that Vladimir Putin has criticised her. In the grand scheme of things, is that, is that such a big deal? No, not at all. I mean, Putin, inter interestingly, the Russians and Putin in particular, they always pick out Britain. Yeah. Uh, they know that the, the main antagonist for them, from their point of view is America, but they always pick out Britain because they sort of pay us the compliment of thinking that we're behind everything, that we fix everything, that we manipulate other people. I mean, if only that was a little bit true, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd be more comforted. <laughs> but the fact is that the, you know, the Russians always, uh, as it were, have a go at Britain because it's a way of having a go at America without having to take any of those consequences. So we're an easy whipping boy. Mm. And undoubtedly, uh, Britain's attitude towards this conflict from the beginning, given that we've been very um, solid on the side of the Ukrainians from before the war started, uh, actually has made us extremely irritating to the Russians. Um, but even if you go back to um, uh, some of the, you know, the, the, the poisoning of, of uh, 
uh, of 2006 and the, and the, uh, the 2018 poisonings in Salisbury, um, the Russians followed the, what we were saying about those with incredible, in incredible detail. And they even interrupted programs to, uh, to mock the things that were being said by the British government. They, they always pay enormous attention to what comes out of the UK as if somehow in mocking it, they actually pay us a compliment of thinking that we're quite important. <laughs> yes. Uh, just on the issue of international relations, I suppose then, America's to bring forward the delivery of uh, dozens of highly accurate guided tactical nuclear weapons to Europe. And this is sort of being looked at as a, uh, you know, a kind of symptom perhaps, an outworking of... of, of increasing, escalating tensions with Moscow. What always fascinates me about these things is that, that we probably attribute those labels to them, but how are they understood and how are they translated and therefore then acted upon in, you know, among world leaders? You know, we can comment on them um, and the escalating tensions, but actually do moves like this, does it have a real, uh, re real impact in the real world? Uh, well, yes, it does in this case, because what's happening is that we are, from the very beginning of this conflict, we, we in the West have been crossing threshold after threshold in terms of what we're prepared to do to help Ukraine. And so to begin with, we want to, we gave them defensive weaponry, anti-tank weapons and so on, which were very effective in the early stages. And then when it was clear that Ukraine could do more than just lose slowly, we began to want to give them the sort of equipment they needed to conduct a counteroffensive. And what the thing they really need now, I mean, they've got the HIMARS, which are the multiple rocket systems, which are very accurate and they're very, very good. But what they really need is heavy missiles, which have got these longer ranges of up to 200 miles and so on, such as the ATACMS, which I think you're referring to, which mm -hmm. is the Army Tactical uh, Missile. <clears throat> now, I mean, some of us believe that the U Ukrainians may already have a few of these, though nobody would admit it. And the Americans won't either confirm or deny that they've given them to Ukraine, but they've certainly given their TACMS missiles to uh, Romania uh, and Poland. And it's entirely plausible, it seems to me, that some of those missiles delivered to other allies have found their way to Ukraine. Um, and I suspect more of them will. There, there may come a moment, a politically sensitive moment, when we admit that we are supplying Ukraine with these missiles because the Russians will say this is a gross escalation. Well, it isn't. It's only equivalent to what they've got. Um, and it's, quite, it's, it's, it's not a matter of what, the, what these weapons will do, but what the Ukrainians use them for. As long as they use them to try to recover their own territory inside Ukraine, there can be no argument. And the Ukrainians are, I think, bending over backwards to indicate that they would not use any weapons to target Russia directly, mm. because that obviously would take the crisis into a, a different area.